So let's talk about Mombasa and Bonta. We got into Mombasa in the morning. And first things first, we had our driver meet us, Mr. Benjamin. Again, another amazing driver. Um, so he was ready for us, got us um, picked up. And uh, we decided we were going to do the tour first and then just spend the rest of the time resting. So yeah. we went straight. So um, to kind of give folks an idea, there's the island of Mombasa and then there's the mainland. Okay. And so um, we actually flew um, to the mainland and then drove to the island. You have a bridge that uh, connects. Oh, yeah. So we did that, and when you get to the island, um, we went straight to the downtown, um, met with another uh, wonderful tour guide. He's actually a historian, Mr. Ahmed. Amazing, amazing uh, walking tour we did. So he met with us, Mr. Benjamin handed, handed us off, and we did a walking tour of Mombasa. It took us about two hours. Um, we were walking for two it hours. It was about two hours, but you guys did so great. It was so painful. No, it was not. You enjoyed yourself. I remember seeing you drinking fresh coconut water from the coconuts. Okay. Yes, you had fun doing that. But it was painful after that. Okay, it was painful. Why were you smiling through the whole thing? No, I'm going to show all the pictures with you smiling through the whole I thing. I mean, it's a picture. <laughs> I have video too where you didn't know I was filming. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So she had fun. It was not painful. It must have been a mistake. So we did the tour of the downtown um, and I will upload a video. I mean, there's just so much, um, so much footage um, to go through, but it, it, you know, we're talking about centuries of trade and relations, you know, um, uh, with so many different groups of people. So very unique tour. Um, we toured Fort Jesus as well. And um, with Mombasa, you're talking about centuries of relations, people coming in from India, you have Arab influence, and um, of course, um, Kenyan um, influence, and centuries of all of this you know, has really defined the city. And so um, I'll definitely be posting video uh, of our tour. And Bongta, you remember going into the caves? Oh yeah. Yeah. And um, we, we just, it was, it was amazing. Um, so we did that. And then we headed over to Sarova, Mombasa, mm -hmm. White Sands. It was great. It was so good. I rode a camel for the first time. What did you like about uh, Sarova? I liked the kids club. So they had a kids club. Um, Sarova Mombasa truly is an all-inclusive experience. Um, you have the benefit of a conference center, you know, for the business type, but for the family type, which, you know, this was definitely a leisure trip, multiple uh, swimming pools, zero level entry, playgrounds, kids club, where the kids were happily engaged throughout the day. They did crafts, they did games, a lot of learning. Swam. And um, there's the spa. So I did spend some time at the spa. You also have the gym. Um, and the food was pretty good, I'd have to say. Um, there was enough variety that you would have something for everyone. So yeah. I highly, highly recommend uh, Sarova White Sands, Mombasa. And so uh, we wrapped up our trip going back to Nairobi. But this time we had a different driver, Mr. Chris. Mr. Chris. And again, just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chris took us the following day after picking us up at the airport. Um, we went to a craft center, cultural craft center, and we also had a meal there. You have a nice restaurant where I finally got the elusive nyama choma. We also went what did you have there? Um, I had 
hot chicken tenders and fries. Sticking with what she knows. But the nyama choma was... Yeah, I actually wish I had that because I <laughs> it was thought very good. that was going to be something different than I expected, but it, it, it looks good. Yeah, yes. so you're talking about yeah. some... This was a beef steak, kind of. Like. You said it tasted good. Yeah, and so we did that. Um, and the following day, Mr. Chris was the one who picked us up and got us to uh, the David Sheldrick um, Trust. We also went to the Kazuri Bead Factory, yeah. which was just so a really beautiful story. Um, how... Uh, they came about, you know, just making beads from clay and providing uh, these ladies who who work work uh, at Kazuri uh, a mean of, means of employment. Kazuri actually means pretty little thing, and so um, anything could be a Kazuri, right? Anything pretty and little. Uh, but we also will put together a quick snippet of um, our Kazuri experience it was it was really good Bine your sister wants to make kazuri you know she wants to have her own kazuri, kazuri bead factory um but it was really nice uh the tour was beautiful they were so hands-on recommendation is to go early oh. if we were like the first people there yeah, they were the first people. um when they opened i think nine nine o'clock as soon as we got done with our tour, you had tons of tour guides coming in with like, huge groups. And I was like, thank goodness we got a more personalized experience. Um, so that was good. From there, we went to the Giraffe Center. Twiga. Twiga is giraffe in Swahili. And what about that did you like? I like feeding the giraffe. The giraffes with the purple tongue. Lots of slobber. Now, Giraffe Center is in the same vicinity as the Giraffe Manor. Giraffe Manor is where you would stay. It's a hotel and you would have breakfast or, you know, feed the giraffes from your balcony kind of thing. The Giraffe Center is right next to it. You just, you know, pay an admission fee and, and, and go in and enjoy the giraffes that are going about the business and are happy to stop for treats. Um, so we left there and um, we went to Lovebirds Community, another crafts community, craft center. Yes, that's where we watched the soccer match. This was during the Olympics and we were watching the match between Spain and um, the Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast Cote d'Ivoire. So um, we had a quite exciting time. If anyone watched that match, it was down to the last Ew. night we did that and then you know we wrap, wrapped up our day so um please for those of you who um have done a trip like this um international with kids full itinerary um please let us know uh if you have any tips that you recommend in the comments section or just ask us what questions um you would like for us to address um, Bonta, I think school is starting soon, so you may not be available for a live video, but we um, are, you think you are? We, we might do a live video where we could answer some questions that you may have uh, oh, pertaining to, awesome. to the travel. Yeah? Please, okay. please be there. Uh, so uh, that was just on the logistics end. On the way back, we had a semi-nightmare. Oh um, my goodness. Coming back from Nairobi, uh, we were well warned that we needed to be at the airport three hours, four hours ahead of time. Yeah, but... Um, so somehow. we got there three hours ahead of time. Somehow. The line checking in was all the way into the parking lot. Yeah, part of it is the bottleneck you get from COVID tests. By the way, we did our COVID test in Nairobi. It was a breeze. Um, we got it done at AMREF. And um, AMREF is super reputable, well known. The test came back in less than 24 hours to your email. You print it out, you show up to the airport, no problem. Mm -hmm. Um, so we did that. 
and um, three hours uh, with a little more time to spare, we got through. We were actually very fortunate. We get up to the counter and we're checking in and it, it what happened? We had American yeah. Airlines cancel three tickets, our three youngest, and at that point, the agent um, at the check-in was basically saying, hey, um, you may need to call American Airlines. Well, I've had some experience calling airlines uh, recently, um, and invariably, I choose a callback because you can be waiting um, for an hour on the phone, and the callback takes an hour anyhow. So I told him, I said, I don't think I'm going to get anywhere, but I went ahead and made the call. My callback time was in four hours. four hours. And so I asked for the callback and then I called again and I sat on hold. Well, I have to give 100% credit to the Qatar Airlines check-in folks at JKI. Um, Mr. Andrew Marungu, he was amazing. Please, if you ever watch this video, if you are out there somewhere, you did a fantastic job um, really trying to sort us out. And Mr. Andrew um, was equally frustrated as we were and tried to work on his end to uh, reestablish or reissue these tickets for our youngest three. We were at worst prepared for half of the family to come back and uh, I most likely would be the one staying with the younger kids. And fortunately, we didn't have to do that. 20 minutes before the flight took off, he was able to secure two seats and the infant ended up um, on my lap. So he issued a lap um, ticket. And um, we are just so grateful because it really does change the experience um, traveling as a family when you get split up. Um, we've done that before and um, wouldn't choose to do that again. So, um, Mr. Marungu, thank you so much. Um, American Airlines, I'm not sure why that happened. I have uh, since learned of other reports from other uh, travelers indicating that this is not a one-off. Um, however, having that printout again, that printout where I could show this is what we paid for. We are supposed to be all coming back at the same time on the same flight. And I think that really made the difference, especially for the Qatar Airways crew that was working on our end, on our behalf to get us on that flight. So um, we're very thankful and grateful. Um, Mokta, you have something to say about it? Yes. And the worst part is that my mom called twice to confirm the flights. Very frustrating. Okay, I'm done. You feel my frustration. Well, I do. I am a little maybe OCD about the process, but you can see why. So this happens quite a bit. So uh, hopefully we, we don't have to all go through this. Um, and certainly... Um, when you're in a time crunch to get back to work, that can be a huge problem. So um, we made it through and um, thank God we had a safe uh, trip, safe flight, got back home, um, jet lagged. We had some of us more jet lagged than others. And uh, watch out for a video um, on how to deal with jet lag, especially for kiddos because uh, we have some experience with that as well. Um, so anyhow, Bongta, I think we ought to wrap this yeah. up. Um, that was our trip or how it went. Thank you for watching. Please share it. Thank you all. And um, just so you know, we do have a couple videos on the channel. Um, we have a short about uh, where you can just watch about a minute or so of the wildebeest crossing the Mara River. We also have a pick log where it's just a bunch of our photos, maybe 500 photos, 700 photos, just, you know, like a slideshow kind of thing. Um, we are working on more videos where we can share 
um, some of what we've just talked about, um, particularly those sites that we visited um, for kids with kids. So thanks for watching. Again, share, like, subscribe, comment, um, whatever it is that you all do. We appreciate your viewership and um, keep us going. Um, let us know what you would like for us to cover based on our travels. Um, thank you. And this is the Maya Wontang with my dearest Bogta. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye. Bye bye. I hope you like my video. That you do. Subscribe.